In 2008, the preparations for the Cascade and Chinook Ultra Deepwater project started at Jumbo Offshore's headquarters in Rotterdam. In close consultation with the client, Technip USA, procedures were established and safety meetings held. Crane operators were trained on Jumbo's crane simulator in its headquarters in Rotterdam. The deep water deployment system on board Jumbo's offshore heavy lift vessel Fair Player, as well as a purpose-built hang-off frame, were important tools for this project. The installation of this frame was a precise operation. As always, safety was of utmost importance. In the port of Rotterdam, the mobilization team geared up the fair player with extra equipment, such as winches, lifeboats and accommodation. The critical hang-off procedure was tested on site. The chain showed a perfect fit in the hang-off frame. In October 2009, the fair player departed from her home port to Pori, Finland, where the project cargo was manufactured. Five 350-ton buoyancy cans, measuring almost 40 meters in length and 6.5 meters in diameter, were ready to be shipped. The structures were brought alongside the fair player by self-propelled modular trailers and connected to the two 900-ton mast cranes. Very gently, the first can was maneuvered above the vessel's hold and lowered, a procedure that had been prepared and trained for in advance. The first buoyancy can was lowered directly into the vessel's hold. The second buoyancy can would fit tightly between the first can and the side of the vessel's hold. Therefore, it was guided along the wall by purpose-built rails. Buoyancy cans 3, 4 and 5 were strategically positioned on the weather deck. After thorough sea fastening, HLV Fair Player was ready to set sail to the installation site. The Fair Player crossed the Atlantic Ocean and encountered heavy seas, which put ship and crew to the test. After two weeks, the ship arrived safely in the Cascade and Chinook field in the Gulf of Mexico on the 5th of November. The Fair Player joined Technip's offshore vessels Deep Blue and Deep Pioneer. The first step of the installation procedure was the subsea handover of a 2,300 meter long riser from the Deep Blue to the Fair Player. The submerged weight of this riser was close to 400 tons, a dynamic challenge. 200 meters below the vessels, an ROV transferred a spring line, and the load was slowly transferred to the fair player. The ROV disconnected the hook of the deep blue to allow the fair player to hoist the riser and chain to the surface. Subsequently, the chain was carefully maneuvered into the hang-off frame and lowered to the connection with the buoyancy can. While the ship's hull bore the weight of the riser through the hang-off frame, the chain with the riser was connected to the buoyancy can. The next step was overboarding and upending the buoyancy can with the riser attached, with a combined weight of 780 tons. After final instructions from the captain, Fair player's cranes lifted the buoyancy can from its saddles. The motion of the buoyancy can was controlled with the aid of tiger winches. The lower side of the can was positioned precisely above the hang-off frame and the chain and riser were raised. 
While the fair player's position and ballast system were carefully monitored, the buoyancy can was overboarded and upended. The buoyancy can touched the Gulf of Mexico's splash zone and slowly descended into the blue water. During this operation, it was essential for the two crane operators to work in optimal coordination. Simulator training paid off. The buoyancy can was flooded and submerged deeper in the gulf. Now Technip's offshore construction vessel, Deep Pioneer, joined in for ROV support. The slings of the Fair Player 4 crane would now be disconnected and the main hoist retrieved. A second ROV was lowered to control the ballasting of the buoyancy can. Closely watched by the crew, the lower slings were disconnected by the first ROV and retrieved to the surface. Finally, the buoyancy can descended into the deep, suspended in the Fair Player's deep water deployment system. The second ROV connected to the can to adjust the balance level by pumping in nitrogen. The more than two kilometer long assembly could now be lowered towards the production wellhead on the sea floor, be connected and become buoyant. A critical moment was the disconnection of the automatic shackle of the fair player's deep water hoist. Success. The last ballast water was removed from the buoyancy can to finalize the first installation job. After successful installation of the first three cans, the last two cans were shifted to the vessel's main deck. The purpose-built guidance rails proved their value and both cans were lifted to the main deck in a smooth, continuous operation. Shortly after sunrise, the hatch covers were repositioned. The final two installations were executed in the same way. Challenge complete. Mission accomplished.